Hello everyone, this is Ace Stocky here and welcome to the second, and this is the, I guess, the, the hopefully the final that I'll have to do, how to install the Ace Stocky Pack video. So, you've got to start by going to my YouTube channel, which is ANJ Stockwell, and so I might just show everyone how to do that. I've got my own little button that I use, but it's just user ANJ Stockwell. And then once you're there, it'll come up with my videos. You just got to go to whatever. This one's for all. Sorry, how loud that came through. You just got to go to whatever my latest video is. In this case, it's. Let's see how colorful an afternoon part can be. Two. With prices that give us more spring. Sorry, in this case, it, like I said, it's part two, and then we just come down a little bit to the description of the video, and there will be a link in there. So I click on the link, and say save file, and then in this case, I will put it in the. Uh, games, Minecraft, a stocky pack, client folder. So now that that's downloaded, what is important is you will need to be able to determine where you save your file. So I use Firefox, so the way you do that is in options, and under the saves you say downloads, always ask me to, where to save files. That's the button you have to tick for Firefox. Uh, Chrome and Internet Explorer have very similar options that you'll have to use if it's not downloading it to where you want it to. So I'll close that down now and I'll bring up the window. So this is the folder where I just did that to. So now you just right click and if you're using uh, WinRAR or 7-Zip you just right click and whichever particular program it is say extract files here. If you're using normal Windows you won't be able to open a 7-zip file by default, so you'll have to get either 7-zip or WinRAR. Basically, you just extract it here, and that'll open up all of the files in the archive. You then double-click on install.bat, and it brings up, first of all, this, this window here that basically explains how to go through this process, which is what I'm describing in this video. But it basically says unzip all of the files into a folder, which is what we just did then. Place minecraft.exe in the same folder. So now I will copy my minecraft.exe and I will place it in that same folder because if you don't place it in the same folder, you'll get an error. So I might actually demonstrate the error that you get if you don't put it there to start with. So you press spacebar because it's pressing a key to continue, now it says about to run Minecraft for the first time. So press spacebar again and there has been an error in the store. Minecraft.exe not located. Please try to correct the error and restart the installer. So what I'm going to do is just give me one second, I'll copy Minecraft over and then I'll restart the installer. Okay, so I've got it back up now and I'm back to where I was up to. So now I have placed Minecraft.exe in the same folder. So it says double click on install.bat, so I have done that and it's opened up. So it says once you understand how to install the pack, press any key to continue. So I'll press any key. So it says now about to run Minecraft. It pops up with your normal Minecraft login box. So I will now log into Minecraft. And very importantly is it says so log in to, as usual to install Minecraft and then quit, don't play it yet. So that's, that's important because if you play it right now you're not getting any mods. So then the next step after running in is a bunch of downloads will pop up. Save them in whatever folder you unzip the pack forward slash the downloads directory. So I'll show you what that means now. So here it is, the installer will now download the required mods and save them all into the downloads directory and press any key to continue. So you can see it's now popped up with a folder to download the first mod and where you want to save them is in the this is where I unzip it in the client folder in the download so this is where I want to save all of the mods that I download so I click skip and then say I want to save the file and then I navigate to make sure I'm in the correct folder which is a stocky pack client downloads and then I hit save so that is now the first mod saved and I come back to my window here, press spacebar and it goes on to the next one. 
Now if, if at any stage you receive an error, that's either because it can't find the file that it's looking for because it's been saved in the wrong place, or because it has saved the wrong version of the file. Sometimes that will happen. It, it checks to make sure it's the right version before it uh, will continue on. And that will sometimes happen if they've updated the link or updated the mod, or also if they have uh, change something altogether and change their AdFly link. So any of those things could cause a problem that will either give you a browser error saying it can't find the web page or it will give you an error where the in installer won't, can, won't keep going. So I'll close this down now and you can see that Minecraft Forge is installed. Now if I don't save audio mod or accidentally save it incorrectly you'll see that I get an error and it says audio mod missing please correct the error and restart. In this particular case, I know that the error was caused by me not installing the mod correctly. So what I will do is I will go back and I'll run the installer again and it will continue from where I was up to. So you can see here, we're now going to download the mods. It skips the first two and goes back to the next mod. The pack is designed when something updates to only download what you need to keep everything up to date. So in the event that you think you already have a mod and it asks you to download it again, that's probably because the mod is updated and it just wants to make sure that you have the latest version. So I'm going to, actually this is a good one. So you can see here, now downloading Optifine. If you don't wish to install Optifine, just close the download window and don't download it and then it will skip the install. It detects whether Optifine is found and if it's found it installs it, if it's not it doesn't. So this is the one mod that you can choose to skip if you want. I know there's a lot of people who don't like Optifine. Um, I used to have a lot of problem with it myself, but it's working really well now. So I like to do it and I like to have it installed. So here we go and we will save it. And then we will close all these pop-ups that have come up and go on to the next one. So <clears throat> you can see here, downloading Buildcraft in five parts. This is part one. If one of the parts updates, you might get one of the parts downloaded, or you might get two of the parts downloaded, or you might have to get all five of them again. It really depends on what kind of updates happen. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to once again quickly pause the video and just go through and download some of these mods just to make things a little bit quicker for the video, and I'll be back in a second. Back soon. Okay, so I've just finished doing all the Buildcraft downloads, so now it's up to Industrial Craft 2. So press spacebar and this is one that's a little bit different because what it does is it takes you to the place where you need to download Industrial Craft 2 from. So it takes you to download IC2 for Minecraft 1.2.5. You need to click on the client and save that file in the same place that you've been saving everything else. So that's a pretty simple one, but it's a little bit different than the rest of them. So now we're up to Red Power. So I'll download the first one and then after that I will uh, pause the video and then I'll keep working my way through just to, like I said, make things move a bit more quickly. So there we go, I'm up to part two now, so I'm just going to pause the video and be back soon. Okay, so I've just now finished downloading the last part of Red Power. So moving on now to, what was it? It was Craft Guide. So here we go. Downloading Craft Guide. Downloading Timber. You can see that it's a fairly straightforward process that just involves clicking and downloading links. But the way this is set up, it means that the developers who are making the mods, it goes to their AdFly link. So it's giving them all of their dues, and I'm downloading it from their links. So everything is as it should be. So downloading Nether Ore. Downloading power converters. Working my way through. Downloading Mine Factory Reloaded. Advanced Machines. Compact Solars. Okay, so this is one of those things that will occasionally happen. 
Download is restarting. Let's try again. There we go. Much better. Basically, my advice to anyone who has a problem where it says that there's an error with a download is to quit out of the installer and try running it again. And if it doesn't work the second time, send me an email. Now, that, that's in the help file that pops up initially. But I can't stress enough. Just make sure you try it twice and make sure that if you're getting an error that something is missing, that you've saved it in the correct place. And if you're sure that you've saved it in the correct place and it still doesn't work, please let me know because it could be that the developer has changed the version and <clears throat> excuse me, I'm making sure that basically every time I release an episode, I'm putting the current up to date link to the pack in there because it seems to be that about every day or every second day the pack is updating at the moment. Most of them are only really minor updates to help make sure that uh, mods that have changed or if I find out that I, I've installed something in a way that might not work with some people's systems, I try and fix that as well in the installer. What I'm also doing that I'm hoping to have done uh, either today or tomorrow is I'm developing an installer script that'll work for uh, Linux and I'm developing an installer script that will hopefully work for Mac. I'm a little bit off with the Mac one yet. I'm confident with the Linux one because I've got a Linux laptop, so I've been doing a little bit of testing and some playing around with it. Mac, I'm a little bit further off, but I think I know what I'm doing. That's a pretty dangerous thing to say, but I'm reasonably confident that I can do an installer that works in a very similar manner to this. What I'm not 100% sure of yet is whether or not you will be able to have multiple installs like you have on Windows, where whatever folder you put it in, it runs Minecraft from. It might have to overwrite the, I guess, the base install of Minecraft that happens. So yeah, still working on that. And once I work out what's going on with it, I'll make the determination of whether it, it's it's suitable and in a, in a state where it can be released. But I'm really hoping to get that out there because I know there's quite a few people who are looking for, are looking to use this pack on either, well probably more Mac than Linux, but Linux and Mac are very similar in the way that they function. So by doing one, I'm pretty much doing the other one and I can only test one of them. So here we go, still flying through, currently downloading part two of Chicken Bones Wireless Redstone. You can see that I'm just kind of clicking away in the background quite quickly, but I don't feel the need to sort of show everyone all the things I'm doing because it's pretty simple and straightforward that it just pops up. So. You know, I press spacebar, part 3 pops up. And once again, if I was to press X here and accidentally not download it, you would get an error saying, Chicken Bones Wireless Redstone Part 3 missing. So, run the installer again. It'll do some extracting to make sure you've got a fresh version of Minecraft, that you haven't messed something up. And then you can see it jumps straight back to now downloading Chicken Bones in three parts. Part 3 of 3 it's up to. So, it's quite good in that it knows what you have and it knows what you need and it makes sure that you get the right ones and I've got good configuration control or at least pretty good configuration control that it means when I add mods I make sure that they are save game compatible um, I do have some plans in the future of how I'm going to handle if something breaks a save game but I'm not totally sure about that yet. It's something that I'm, I'm working on, what's going to happen if that... If, if Buildcraft was to release a new version that would break save game compatibility, for example, then I would have to look at my block IDs and how I could reconfigure the new Buildcraft to kind of work with it. So I'm, I'm pretty comfortable I've got that under control, that you should be able to start a Let's Play with this version and know that things will keep going and keep working. So... There's been a lot of mods that have been added since the last time I did an install video. Hopefully that should be the last one just there. Yep. So what it's doing there is it just decompressed all of the mods that it needs to to be able to install them. Now it's going to install all the minecraft.jar mods to save you having to do it manually. So there you go. Done. Okay. Error. Cannot find archive. That there is a problem. So what I'm going to do is pause the install, work out what I did wrong. Okay, back again. So basically what had happened is I just messed something up a little bit, so I've fixed it now. So if I run the installer again, you will see that to make sure that I have a fresh version of Minecraft, it will 
unzip Minecraft again. Now it will check for what downloads it needs. It will see that it doesn't need any. And then it'll go back to decompressing the mods. Now it's adding them all to the jar file. You can see that there I didn't get an error, which is good. So now I press spacebar. Now it will update the config files. Now it's going to clean up any excess. And here it pops up with a list of all of the mods that are contained and the links to the mod developers websites for those of you who want to check them out or make a donation. So now that we've finished we're up to launching Minecraft. So we'll make sure that launching Minecraft works correctly. So Minecraft launch. Log in as before. It, it will already remember it. You can see in the background everything going on, shooting through. And here we are ready to run a game of Minecraft. Now there's been a couple of people who have noted some things that they think might be errors. Uh, they turn out not to in fact be errors. Basically what they are is I have it configured with NEI to start in cheat mode. That's just pretty, pretty much standard. But in the options menu I have invert mouse on. So for those of you who like when you push the mouse forward for it to look up you need to change that option. I like it the other way, so that's how it comes out configured. I also have the sensitivity quite high and I have the music turned off. So if any of you notice any problems with not getting music or anything like that, that's part of my config. If you're not getting any sound at all, that's got nothing to do with me. That's a, a Minecraft problem on your system or a Minecraft problem in general. So you can see now I've updated the key control for raise minimap to be the period key. I am actually going to right now change that again to the right bracket key. And the reason I'm doing that is right brackets not mapped to anything else in the game and the full stop key is mapped to the arrows. So if I pick up a bow, here I have my bow. You can see up in the top left hand corner it shows arrow. If you press the period key, so there we go, we have arrow. Press the period key and I've now loaded explosive arrows. Boom. There's a, a slight glitch where sometimes you won't actually see explosive arrows in the bow but you do see them fly through the air. I'm not totally sure what causes that or if there's a way to fix it. It could be an Optifine problem. I'm really not sure, but it's not really too much of a problem. It's You kind of get used to it and it doesn't really cause any problems in the game. So I'm not that bothered with it. I'm not looking to try and fix it. So once again, press the dot again and now I'm back to normal arrows. There you go. So that's basically the install of the pack and how to get it running. I hope this video helped you out. Thank you very much. If you have any problems, like I said, please in the first instance try running the installer again. If you have the same problem again, please send me a PM. If you think you've actually found an error with the installer, please send me an email. My email is in the window at the back, just here. And most importantly, make sure you have fun playing it. That's the whole purpose of playing Minecraft and playing these kind of packs is to have fun. So thanks very much. A stocky out.